Pastor Tunde Bakare has a few nuggets of wisdom for President Mohamed Bari as regards to 2023 elections and the killings of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani in an airstrike by the United States is likely to cause several changes in many countries. And Nigeria might not be exempted from the effects. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. The discussion of 2023 elections seems to have made headway into the church as a serving overseer, Citadel Global Community Church, formerly known as Latter Rain Assembly, Pastor Tunde Bakari, has urged President Mahmoud Buhari not to leave the choice of his successor in 2023 to chance. I wonder, is it the job of the president or the electorate to choose the next president of our beloved nation? Joining me to discuss this this evening on Plus Politics is Ugo Chuku Ikako and Najib Bello, both political analysts. Good evening, gentlemen of the press. Thank you for joining me on Plus Politics this evening. Now, let's get talking immediately. Let's analyze uh, Tune Bakare's call for President Mahmoud Buhari to choose a successor. What's your reaction to that? Najib, let's start with you. Well, it's, it's been a long time coming as that... Um, a while ago, more than a year ago, Tunde Bakari was one of those who had criticized the president for the way he was running the country. But suddenly, he somehow went quiet. Perhaps he had been talked to. He Last year, Tunde Bakari told his church members that he had some kind of vision or he knew for certain that he would be the 16th president of Nigeria. After Muhammad Buhari, yeah, I saw, the 15th. Yeah, there's a video of it where he said um, Buhari is the 15th president and Tunde Bakari himself would be the 16th. And I think that has something to do with all of this because towards the end of the year, Buhari himself said he doesn't want to be interested in discussing who would succeed him. He wants everybody to go out there fairly and, you know, work for their position, whatever position they are put, um, going after. And yes. I think this is what gives Bakari concern because some promises may have been made to him before he claimed that he was going to be the 16th. I remember now, he was one time running mate to President Mahmoud exactly. Buhari in an election. So, where, yes. so there, there seemed to have been some promises made to him before he declared that he was going to be the 16th. And now he's seen like, oh, those promises are getting shaky. So last week... He went to see the president and um, I don't know what the president told him. So him coming out now to maybe mount pressure or declare that the president makes his own choice known. He, there's a long story about, oh, successor in Japan or in China or yeah. in South but, Africa. But, but the truth yes. is that it's not going to be that easy. And perhaps the same promise made to him was made to other people. Oh, you go to I think it's an unfortunate call. Uh, an unfortunate call. An unfortunate so? call. Uh, I think Bakara is among the few people in this country, especially religious leaders, that over time we have the Chris Okotie that will come out to say that God told them to do this at the end of the day, and they fail. And when they fail, they won't admit the fact that they failed on a project, and they go back and still use God's name to say things that are not factual, that are not true at the end of the day. So for me, it's an unfortunate call because at this point, this is three years before the election. Bakari has church members that are hungry. Bakari has community members that, are, that, that have issues that, that has to do with security and the rest of them. He has not, as a, as a religious leader that has, that has an important office in the land, to speak truth to power. Like uh, Najib said, sometime last year did that. But out of a sudden, over the last one year, has gone cold. He just went to the nation. He just went to go and see the president last week, and he came back and started giving us stories that yes. touch. So it does not make sense, all right? It does not make sense in any way. And at the end of the day, for them that call themselves pastors, he's not the first one that made this call. Uh, Chris Okoti and the rest of them have done it in the past, and they all fail, all right? So what they do is that they put up the name of God as mockery, because at the end of the day, somebody will come back and say, God told you this thing, it didn't happen. For me, we still have three more years to go before the election. Bakari does not have anything that shows that he wants to be the president of this country. All right? he has, he's, I don't think he's a member of any political party at, 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 at present. He doesn't, I don't think he belongs to the APC, neither does he belong to the CPC. Mm -hmm. So how does he want to do that within three years? All right. All right. Let me ask you this, Uchuku. Do you think in any way Bakari was pitching himself up for, for the, to be the successor? 
um, of Buhari in any ways. I th yeah, I, I, think, I, th I think he's pitching himself, all right? Because like Najib Rally said, he has said that he will be the 16th president after Buhari being the 15th. He, 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 yeah, he has pitched himself, all right? Because in the fact, in the past, he has contested as vice president with President Buhari and lost. Somehow, Oshibanjo was selected because he had more, more, uh, more, more leverage and more influence. And at the end of the day, they, they won in 2015. But at this point, Bakari, Bakari doesn't have any of that, all right? He's not from his church. It's just his church. It's not like he has a church that has a national spread across the country that will say that, if we pick you to be our presidential candidate, we'll have people that will come and vote for you from across different parts of the country. He doesn't have that. So the only thing that he has is his mouth that he keep using it every Sunday to tell his church members what they want to believe. Because for me, if I'm in the church, I'll start asking questions. This is not the first time you say this thing, sir. Mm -hmm. So it does not make sense. It's an unfortunate call. What we need at this point, this is January 2020. I think this is the, the first week, right? We need people to tell the president the truth about the economy, about insecurity, about uh, unity of the country. And if Bakari cannot do that, he should keep quiet. If Bakari um, cannot do that, he should keep quiet. Yes, do you I, subscribe to that? Of course. I, I saw what he said about succession. Yes. He talked about Singapore. He talked about China. And he said, oh, you must leave a success. He talked about South Africa, that South Mandela, Africa, Mandela left yes. Sabo Mbeki as a successor to continue what he was doing. And um, he, he gave the, his reasons why yeah, Buhari should not just leave office exactly, without a successor. Without a that successor. he has to continue in, in now, the legacy the is, exactly. he has created and he shouldn't just leave it Tunde to... Bakari has been at uh, Latter Rain Assembly for how many decades? Now, who is his successor? You know, you can't just be telling other people what to do and you are not doing the same thing. You know, he has to start from his, himself. Now, the problem is he's already pitched himself. It's not as if whether he's he he has trying to pitch it. He has said it. He said, um, Buhari is the 15th, and I am the, the 16th president of Nigeria. And it's going to be like that. So someone may have promised him something that, oh, if you calm down and you stop criticizing us, I'm telling you something good is coming your way. So it's not, it's not out of the blue that he's saying this thing. He went to the president's office last week. Perhaps the president told him, see, I can't come out and declare for you because of some certain things. But I think the man is being played. It's but, unfortunate. Okay, let, let's look at this now constitutionally. Do we, do we have any constitution backing the, the principle, the system of succession? Of in democracy, not. of course, of course, of course, not. Of course not, not in Nigeria. Not in Nigeria. Not, not, in, not, in, not in Nigeria. We don't have what we have is that what we have that have been able to be entrenched into our political uh, setting is what we have a traditional uh, form of presidency where they appoint a particular party. PDP used to do it very well. Uh, so well, well, let's see what, what uh, APC would do in 20, uh, 20, uh, 2022 when President Buhari is done with his tenure. So that is the only thing we have, and it is not even our constitution does not accept it. It's not. No, it's not in our constitution. It's like a gentleman agreement within the parties themselves. Mm -hmm. So there is no guarantee that when the president finishes in the next uh, three years, he will not select somebody from the north or somebody from the middle bed. Nobody, yes. nobody knows at the moment. So and definitely somebody from his party. Tunde Bakari so a, far is not a member of the APC, APC as long as, as far as we know. Well, by, by, by association, by affiliation, we can it, say yes. It will yes. not work that way. The way the APC is structured right now, there are governors, there are senators, there are ex-governors who have worked very hard to get the party where it is today. They no. won't sit back and someone will come from nowhere because he saw he had a prophecy and they would all just hand over their structure to him. Okay, Go, going by the nations, we know who, who um, instill and use the, the principle, the system of succession and yeah. achieve greatness for their nation. Yeah. Do you think at this point in time in our country's history, mm. we should institutionalize the system of succession in our democracy and politics? I, 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 don't, I don't think so. Why? Uh, because we, Nigerians, we are so good at abusing things. So when we copy models, we bring it down to this country, we bastardize it. Right, I feel that the best thing because already election is election democracy. The way I see is an illusion because at the end of the day, the people that were going to vote is the people that the party leader selected. So at the end of the day, the, the, the person that the, the party will pick, be it PDP, be it APC in, in the next three years, will be the will be the guys that the party leaders, the BOT, the board of trustees say these are the guys that I want to go with. So at the end of the day, we are printing their candidates. Right, because we're not going to the primary within themselves. And that is part of the, that is part of the flaw of democracy. So but I don't think Nigeria need that, right? What we need at this point is for if you feel that you have something to offer, how did they do the last election? Some people, some independent candidates lost the Showers, the Mohalos and the, the Drotoins and the rest of them. They didn't make it at the end of the day. Yes. But if you feel that you have something to offer, come out there. 
push yourself, give it your best. If the people feel the need to vote for you, they will vote for you. And I also, like I said, in, I need to show her, for the people, no, he's, he's, sorry, uh, Bakari. Bakari was mentioned South Africa, but he did not, he forgot to mention the fact, and that is very corny, you know. Men of God in this country can be very smart in trying to Skip trick. Jacob Zuma. Yeah, trick people. You talked about Jacob Zuma, you talked about, he didn't mention Jacob Zuma and the rest of them. And also, he mm. forgot to mention the fact that these people are, these people have been in ANC for years. Yes. They've been in ANC for years. They didn't just wake up and uh, they didn't just wake up in yes. South Africa and hear the word of God um, and said, yeah. this is what we want to do. Exactly. And you know what? Aside from that, the people in Nigeria, we've tried succession. Obasanjo, when there were people yeah. who were supposed to come after Obasanjo, we had Donald Duke, we had other people, even all Jews or Kalu, people who had worked in Bore and the rest. But Obasanjo chose Yaradua. And he put Yaradua there. And eventually, things didn't work out. He put Yaradua and good luck, Jonathan. And at a point, he, he sort of regretted all of that. Then secondly, so we've tried succession. It hasn't worked. But secondly, the people who did succession in Singapore, in China, and the rest, yeah. they planned it. No one came to them to tell them, Oga, you must arrange a successor. It was them that had a plan and they brought people together to say, see, we need some kind of succession. It's not that they were in their houses. But, and, but and let's, people let's take a look them. at our, our politics and mm. the, the God for that is in fact. Yeah. What would we say in a way that's some kind of succession? Yeah, that is some kind of succession. Yes. But the difference is that, like I said, the difference is that is, is a gentleman agreement between the parties and between the Godfathers themselves. It's not enshrined in the constitution. So they can decide in body law or in Asuro that they want to go with the budget de Sanwolu and they want Ambodi to go back in a better guy and relax. So that is their decision. That is, the, that is what they want to do. And they will do that because these, these are party brokers. These are people that determine what goes to this. It, 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 it is given in all democracy across the world. They are party brokers. They are people that are key players that can say, okay, this is what we want. This is what we want to do. But the issue is that you have to be in a party before they decide. Yeah. Okay. But can we, should we totally discard some of the reasons he gave forth? for the reason for his call for succession. Now, I want to read, I want, I okay. want to quote him in his words. I quote, he said it was important for the retired Major General to influence who would emerge as a successor in 2023 so that his legacies will not be rubbished. Which is what? We'll consider which, those legacies which, and then which, also its words. Which, which, leg which legacies? Abuse of you see, that is, of law you see that, is, that is my problem. Yeah. That, that is, sorry, that is my, that's my problem with people like Tunde Bakari. People that call themselves men of God, but have refused constantly over the last few years in this country to speak the truth. I'm not talking about the last, last four years. I'm talking about systematically for the last 16 so years. are you saying the Buhari administration has no legacies we can look at back none, and say yeah, this? None, no none, legacy that none. I can tell yeah, of. I, I will pick no three legacy. things that are important to me. Economy, rule of law, and security. If I'm a lecturer and I give you three over 10 or two over 10 in your exam, it's not passed. You failed. So rule of law, you took the senators in the US to write a letter before Shore will spend Christmas with his family. Why didn't why didn't Bakari say anything? All those, all, all this, uh, why didn't Bakari say anything? His friend Femi Falana was being hounded everywhere in Abuja. What did he say? What did he say? He was in Lagos preaching to a crowd that we don't know what is happening inside that church. So it's easy for them to come and say this thing, but it's not that is not what we need, right? What legacy is he talking about? Is it legacy that people are hungry? People 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 pay more to buy let bag me, of rice. Let me let yes, me say you. a few other things in terms of um, let's leave corruption and all other stuff he has said. Let's consider Some the, econ the, the things, economy, security. Yeah, yeah. security is, is, is poor, really. In terms of all the things that we are promised, I was looking through some videos and I saw us when um, um, Oshibanjo and Buari were campaigning and some of the things they said about 40,000 megawatts. I wish that video was here because it was a recording that never came out. I was in the studio and Oshibanjo told us how they would generate about 10,000 megawatts annually for the next four years we are still about 4,500 megawatts or so. They talked about healthcare, how they are going to put a health insurance system, how they are not going to allow government officials travel abroad for medical tourism, how they are going to clean up the Niger Delta, how they are going to revive the Lake Chad area. Yes. I just looked at the list of more than 40 promises that I was sitting down directly in front of these people when they were saying it, and virtually none has been done. So what, if, if people know any legacy of Buhari, the only thing he did that I felt appreciated when he did the whistleblower program, 
that was a low hanging fruit. If you see anything, report it, you get paid and everything. That was a, something that would have quashed corruption. But it got to a point, they found $40 million somewhere and they started saying, ah, should we pay, should we not pay? The guy that found it is mad, is mentally disturbed. And that was virtually what killed the whistleblower program. So what legacy is he saying about arrest people, lock them up, and then go and start investigating or start? It's, it, it doesn't Critical, make sense. Critical, um, let's take a look at the economy. Since the inception of um, President Mamadou Buhari, would you say there's, there have been reforms that are brought about growth and development? Critically now, I mean. No, there's, there's no. And I, it's sad to say there's no reform. Uh, part, of the things, part of the things that, for example, let's flash back to Basinger's regime. So era as as democratic president, you could see the banking reforms, you could see the telecommunication reforms, and we know that today those reforms are still standing as pillars of our economy. All right, there's nothing you could mention when they were coming in. It was easy for about Tunde Rajifashola to complain and say that uh, power generation is very poor. They're going to do this, they will do that. Like Najib said, nothing has been done. Right, the monetary policy. The last time I came in the fiscal policy, you've seen how it has been bastardized so far under this administration. It was under this administration that dollar increased. You know, so there's a lot of things. It's not. I'm not saying this thing not because I'm not saying this thing doesn't sound like uh, the president is is a is. Uh, there's nothing good about. It. He's a good father. We're not going to deny that. But we're talking about being a president. I don't think he has proven himself. You can still be a good father and still be a terrible president. And that is what I'm saying. And the fact is that the economy has not shown any progress since they came in. And I don't have an issue with him. All right, my issue is Pundebakari that will leave Lagos. Enter Abuja, go to Asoro. You are a man of God. You, you seem to have a problem with the person of Tune Bakari. Yes, I no, have. I, I, no, I, I, I we, we should be very clear. Should right be, now, we are angry. We are angry. You should I be am doing angry. That. People because, are poor. Because, see, there have been a lot of things happening in Nigeria. I, I supported um, Osibanjo Buhari in 2015. He supported Osibanjo Buhari. At some point, we started seeing that the things these people say they would do, they are not doing it. Then we started withdrawing and saying, oh, you guys are not doing this thing. Why are you not doing this thing? But at some point, he just paused and kept quiet. And for a while, we didn't know what was happening. Next thing he said, he's number 16. He's going to be the president. And now he's asking for anointing. That's what is happening. Mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not too much of a drama that you won't easily say. He's virtually trying to muscle Buhari into saying, oh, I am with um, Tunde Bakari. So that is what it is. Let's not try to pretend that we don't know what's happening. So I'm not happy about it. Yes. Ugochuku. Now, this is a, in his words, he identified the enemies of the nation as political puppeteers who rigged the system to enthrone their stooges and use them to corner resources and opportunities. And I'm just wondering if he, 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 he's, you already said you're the 16th he's, he's, he's president. He's sounding like what he's describing. Who is a stooge? He, he's on that list. <laughs> He, 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 Bakari, he, he made that list himself and he added himself on that list because of what he said. Because number one, if you are truly interested in this country, what you could have done in moving this country forward over the last two years to tell us what you do special. The president does not owe you anything. Whether you have a gentleman agreement in the past, the president does not owe you anything. President Barry should not even listen to him. All right? What he needs to do is that if he's interested, like Najid said, then put a successor in your church. Latarin, they've changed the name. Put a successor there. Allow the person to continue the work of ministry. Then enter the streets. Go to Balende. Go to Kavanchan. Go to Bakleke. Go to Sakibiam and ask for votes. If your people think that you are worthy, they'll give you that vote. You cannot, you cannot try in 2020 to trick the president using anointing mm. to become the president. No. And the truth is that it's even too late. If he believes in succession, he should have appointed a successor in his church more his than 15 ministry. years ago. Years ago. Oh, let, let's, let's round up on this note on this segment. What is pivotal? What should be pivotal to the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari now? Trying to create a legacy. There is no legacy. The, the, the legacy this man Legacy stopped. of what now? Specifics. Of infrastructure. Okay. If rebuilding the economy, strengthening our security. Doing cleaning up the um, the, the the Niger Delta will just tell like you security issue that most of the reprisal attacks we we're, we're experiencing in Burundi and the likes of them we don't have them no more. Benny, and that, that is an amount Benny, of success reported let me, in security. Let me tell you, let me tell you something we used to do back in the day. We yeah. can't do. It. We can't get in a bus, in a luxury bus, and drive round Nigeria from down south here to up. A lot of times, I used to travel by road before. I for many years, I never, I didn't travel by air. But last year, when people were calling me to come to the north and do some things, I said, I can't go through that road. They will kill me. 
you know. So we need to be careful when we say, oh, Boko Haram did not. And recently they've started attacking, but I can agree that Boko Haram is not attacking as much as they used to do. Yes. But when you talk about traveling around Nigeria from one city to the other, from one state to the other, there are people robbing, there are people killing, there are people, all sorts of things, kidnapping everywhere. Security has not improved. They've tackled one aspect of security. It has reduced in that way. But when we talk about others, it's, increased. it's, it's, as, it's as if those Boko Haram members are now dropping that terrorism and going to robbery or Ugo going Chuko, into quickly, kidnapping or something legacies. else. Uh, for me, uh, it, it's too late to create a legacy. Mm. I, think, I think what he can do now, two things. Try and make Nigeria, if possible, what would, like I said, what would he do in Salami with the Soludo? Try and make sure that our market is pro-investment. Let people begin to come in now. That is one thing you can do. And also, two things. Make sure that you st start respecting the rule of law. So that you don't go down. Already you are being called the general again in 2020. So you don't go down with this tag. And most importantly, there will be an election in 2023. You are not going to contest. You are not going to be part of this election. You owe, us, you owe it to us as Nigerians to conduct a free and fair election. If you can manage to do these three things for the next, for the next three years, believe me, we can easily forget his mistakes. But my issue is that it's like the rhetoric he wrote for the new year. How committed is he to doing all these things? Let's forget about legacy. The most important is election 2023. Can you, can you guarantee, us, guarantee us a free and fair election? Will the economy get better within this time? Will the security improve? If, if the court say you should free someone like Najib or me or anybody tomorrow, will you allow us to go home or will you wait for a U.S. NATO to write a letter? So these are the most important things that, that is key to us. It's not just about a pastor that owns a church that calls himself a pastor that's supposed to speak the truth. You're back to Bakari. Yeah, because Bakari, Bakari is the topic. Bakari really. is the topic. He is yes, the topic. So Najib, he said it's too late for a legacy. Do you, do you agree with that's, that? I said the same yeah. thing. There's no, for now, no, he says it's too late. I yes. don't think it's too late for a legacy. I believe three years is enough for him to do something tangible because there are projects he's been working on since 2015. Second Niger Bridge, which the entire contract for Second Niger Bridge was supposed to be two and a half years or thereabout. So when he came in in 2015, the bridge had already started. They had already started some work at the bridge, at least site clearance and bringing it. By middle of 2017, we should have had the second Niger Bridge. Now it's it's been almost it's going to five years now. So if he can put in the, put in place the second Niger Bridge, maybe even start the Fort Mainland Bridge, whether it's a Lagos project or not. If he can clean up the Niger Delta, revive the Lake Chad, these are things he can be remembered for still. But he talked about them from 2015 to 2017 and he abandoned them. Thank you, Najib Bello, Ugo Chuku, Kiakov, for your contribution in this segment. And thank you for staying with us. We will go for a short break now. And when we return, the effects of the killing of Iranian General Qasim Soleimani by the United States on security in Nigeria is up for discussion. Stay with us. <laughs> 